Als nächstes hören wir von jemandem, der im zarten Alter von fünf Jahren über den heimischen Gartenzaun Sandwiches und Getränke verkauft hat an Passanten. Jetzt sagen sich alle, naja, das kann ja jeder, da haben sie recht, aber er hat das vermutlich nur gemacht, weil gleich nebenan eine sehr große Sportanlage war. Sport, Hunger, Durst. Ziemlich schnell waren seine fünfjährigen Spielkameraden seine Mitarbeitenden. Das war übrigens nicht Herr Schneider. Heute verkauft Professor Omida Shari keine Brötchen und Säfte mehr. Heute bringt er Menschen wie Ihnen bei, wie man besser verkaufen kann, wie man besser führen kann. Als HSG-Professor für strategisches, strategisches Management und als Managing Director des Masters in Strategy and International Management. Ein Studiengang, der regelmäßig und weltweit Spitzenplatzierungen einheimst. Wenn sich jemand wie er das Spannungsfeld Management und Digitalisierung äh, anschaut, dann kann man davon ausgehen, dass Business as usual definitiv keine Option mehr ist. Meine Damen und Herren, Professor Aschari. Hello, good morning and welcome. Welcome home to St. Gallen for those of you who came from other parts uh, of Switzerland and Germany and maybe other countries as well. Um, I'm very glad to be here among you and um, I know that it's on the late side and you want to have a break sometime soon, so I'll try to keep myself concise, but still I want to leave you a message. Um, in the last 25 years, I had the privilege to develop people, lots of people, students, managers, executives, top executives. And wonderful friendships developed from it. Um, and it's uh, very enriching to have um, the chance to accompany people in their development. At the same time, there are learning experiences which um, derive from it, insights. One of these insights is that all these different generations of leaders have three things in common. The first thing is that they all want to tap into opportunities to grow, so they want to contribute to growth. The second one is that they want to develop themselves as individuals, develop skill sets, develop certain competencies for their career progression, and they are searching for meaning, for purpose. And therefore, the title of today is Purpose, because I want to offer you a different perspective on it, a little bit different perspective. Somewhere out here is where we are, right? And uh, it's a fascinating world. And somewhere in this huge mass of planetary systems, there is our Earth. Some people call it Blue Home Planet because of its wonderful, beautiful, stunningly beautiful white, blue, marble surface. And it's not, you know, by chance that people, astronauts who, for example, saw that from the first time, from the perspective of the moon, felt so much in love with it. And it's the only planet we have for now, right? This is our life. And while we make a living up here, we know that it's severely challenged. We cannot deny that. And Albert Einstein, many decades ago, said a new type of thinking is essential, a new type of thinking, not just more thinking, a new type of thinking is essential if mankind is to survive and move to the next levels. And I think more than ever, this is true, isn't it? Who would agree with that? Just lift up your arm, who, who would agree with that? Isn't it? Now than ever, is that something which we need? And you see, the dilemma, and I was thinking a lot about it, 
maybe I shouldn't think too much about it. <laughs> it's a different type of thinking. I want to talk about it. But I think what we, what we see is a world with two faces. On the one hand, we have companies being challenged with um, building resilience in the face of disruption. On the other hand, we are trying to find paths to grow as companies, as industries, also as society. And it's a world where on the one hand we are developing wonderful devices and solutions, technical solutions, which, yes, undoubtedly are benefiting humankind. Millions of people are benefiting from it. On the other hand, we have injustices, imbalances, shameful things happening, things which we can really be shameful of that mankind is still in this dilemma, in this imbalance. And I think that what's happening is, we can call it a world in transition. At the moment, it's a world lost in transition. So while I'm saying that, I do think that what's happening is that there is a new kind of change which we are tapping into. It's not just a matter of degree of change, where we say it's just more change, more a magnitude of change, uh, worldwide, global, etc. It's a different kind of a change we are growing into. It's as if um, the world is becoming new. We don't see it. We can't perceive it. But it's happening. And we feel it and we sense it. And that is the topic of purpose, which starts with the phenomenon of transformation. Who ever experienced transformation? Personal transformation. That's around 28%. No, that's not enough. Are you sure? That's your first experience. We were all born. Personal transformation. We all experienced it. First thing when being born into this world. And when something new is being born, it doesn't mean that one doesn't sense it beforehand, isn't it? When a child is born, the child is born, comes, and you see how the child is looking at the father in awe, right? After a while, you realize that the child is also in awe looking at the fridge behind you. But that's a different topic. I'm joking. Um, this child has developed over nine months. And what happens before a child is born? There are contractions. The contractions pace up. There is a pattern behind it. The mother in labor needs to go through these contractions. If the parents would see each contraction as a reason to stop giving birth to a child, it doesn't work. The child will come. And the contractions are the indicators for that. Why am I telling you that? Because the same thing I feel is happening also in our world right now. Our world is in labor. We have, instead of contractions, disruptions. Technological disruptions, social disruptions, financial disruptions, all types of disruptions which make us very insecure. But we shouldn't forget, in my view, that behind these disruptions, there is a transformation happening. And transformation means that something is changing as a whole. It's not just an aspect of us which is changing. Now, um, when we talk about transformation and knowing that transformation is so decisive for us to move on as humanity, we have to ask ourselves, who are we? Aren't we the one who, is, who are part of this transformation, this change? What does it mean for each one of us? How do we change? How do we transform? And this is the topic of purpose. Purpose meaning the reason for being. 
the reason of existence, a topic which we usually shy away from. We're too busy, too much going on, but I find this is the key to transformation. Transformation is something we need to accelerate and we have to make sure that transformation happens because the end of transformation is the child we are going to give birth to as humanity. And that is a new consciousness. A new consciousness is what we are actually getting into. And this new consciousness doesn't mean that the world will be totally different, but it means that we are going to view the world differently. There is a new meaning which we give to the world, to the things which we care for, which, which are meaningful to us, where we know these should be our priorities. These are things which make sure that we can keep in balance. When we talk about purpose, um, then we also need to understand that if you really mean something, it will lead to action. If it doesn't lead to action, it means we haven't meant it really deep at our core yet. And this is also true for organizations, thinking about what is actually the purpose of my organization. Why is it that each one of your organizations should stay in business tomorrow, September 1st. Anyone would miss anything if it wouldn't be there? Or does it mean something to people out there? And um, when we talk about purpose, we also talk about the fact that as uh, Hans Ulrich actually 35 years ago once voiced very nicely in one of his essays, 1982, he says a company is a purpose-oriented social system. He says a company is an institution of society. Isn't today, well, isn't that today actually something we need to pay much more attention to, to this aspect? In which way are we serving also our surrounding, that we don't perceive our environment just um, as something which is, consists of uh, different stakeholders, them being different customers. We're talking about human beings, both inside the company as well as outside the company. Archimedes, the great um, mathematician and physicist around 250 BC, he said, give me a place to stand and I will move the earth. What do we stand for? Really. Once we know that, we can be resilient. Also, organizations as well. This whole topic of agility in organization is deeply connected with this question. Also has to do with being on the search for purpose. I'm not talking about it having a dogmatic way of looking at it. Once found a purpose, ever found it. That's not the way it is. It's a search. This is ambiguity. We are never going to be finished in finding it. It's a search. So what is our challenge? And I would like to coin a, a statement which I deeply believe in. Um, I think as a leader, we are responsible for others. And as leaders, we should be the first followers by following a purpose, a very conscious purpose both for ourselves as well as for our organizations. Our employees should follow our example. They shouldn't follow us as individuals, nor should they follow our positions. They should follow our example of trying to find purpose, questioning core assumptions, trying to see things from different angles, not clinging to old views, being open-minded. This is for me the call for leaders in our world, not just in Switzerland or in Europe. This is a worldwide phenomenon. And I want to close with um, two statements, one statement from Leo Tolstoy who said, everyone wants the world to change. Nobody wants to change himself. <laughs> and therefore, we have to realize if it doesn't boil down to the core, 
where we actually need to step out our comfort zone and question, put questions such as, who am I? Yes, this question, who am I? How should I develop or transform, knowing that transformation is about changing something as a whole, if I don't even know who I am? Because I personally don't see each one of you as just a, a mass of flesh and blood and some brain cells. Think about it. This is really the question. Other questions which I would like to share with you, two more, and then I'm done. One question is, what do I stand for and how does it reflect in my daily life? I very much believe in not trying to be a shooting star. Shooting up and then pff, falling down quickly. We have to be long distance runners. We have to define standards of excellence. And then we have to take ourselves to account in the morning, in the evening, and say, how am I doing against the standard of excellence? Another question which I always pose to students is not to just think about what do I want to achieve, but to think about who do I want to become? Because none of us is finished yet. We are not complete. And this is also the beauty of being a human being. Thank you very much.